Hey everybody, it's time to say something that I've been looking forward to for many, many years. Welcome to City Skylines 2! Paradox Interactive has been kind enough to grant me and many other content creators early access to the game, so we can make some videos, streams and whatnot to show off what the game's all about. And during the next few months there will be some other releases as well, so stay tuned for that, but for now, I just want to use this opportunity to mess around with the game a little bit and try some ideas because honestly I know there's going to be a lot of content out there very quickly now to show you what the game is all about and go through all of the features and I don't think I'm really best suited to add to that conversation. I just want to do something that I find fun and see whatever it turns into. And after a bit of messing around with the game, once I got my hands on it, I was figuring out what I could do. For a little bit, I was actually thinking of making a Dutch city, but honestly, that's just way too hard with the assets in the game. It's nearly impossible. But I did notice that we have a bunch of row houses. We also have some nice detached houses that um, look quite nice. And altogether, I think this game is already pretty well suited to make an English town and landscape, and so that's what I'm going to do here. Unfortunately, we don't have access to hedges, uh, at least not that I know of yet, um, but still, I think with the road system, the trees, and the buildings that we have in the game, it's very doable to do a small rural English town with the surrounding countryside, and I think it's a very typical look as well that's really fun to work on too. Now, First thoughts about the game, because I do think it's uh, good to also share those. The road system is absolutely amazing. And if you've already spent your time lately looking forward to this game and checking all of the videos that Paradox has been releasing about it, you've probably already noticed this, but the road system is so much better than City Skylines 2. It's really like they, or uh, City Skylines 1, it's really like they took all of the feedback that people had about the road system in the first game and decided to add everything that the community was asking for. And I think one of the things that makes it so much better is just that it's so easy to use. In the first game, you were always kind of fighting with it, getting roads that you couldn't place and trying to hook up and snap things together. And it just didn't work very well. And in this game, the road system is a lot more forgiving. Uh, you can really just plop these things down anywhere and they're very easy to connect very easy to put down into all kinds of shapes and especially the highways although unfortunately I'm not going to um, cover the highways in this video yet uh, are also amazing the way that lanes work now is fantastic and a lot more user-friendly than in the first game so if you haven't already I really recommend checking out some content to see how the road system has changed also um, check out the videos on the city skylines channel on all the different parts of this game um, because they go into a great level of detail, both with some cinematic videos and some behind the scenes with uh, the developers. And it's really great content, so yeah, I highly recommend it. Anyway, for this town, I wanted to make something kind of shaped like English towns that you find all over the countryside. So to build this, I spent a lot of time on Google Maps because I'm not very... Um, experienced in making English towns and something that I noticed well that's very easy to notice straight away is that the English countryside has a very particular look the fields aren't very large they're not very straight either there are just all these squiggly roads everywhere and lots of hedges and rows of trees and bushes all around them so it's a very interesting looking patchwork of small fields with a lot of foliage in between and something I noticed is that a lot of the towns, they have these Victorian row houses and semi-detached houses in also curvy, winding streets that um, also follow, typically, the old rural landscape. So you'll have some fields that are, are very curvy and then at some point in time they started being filled in with these houses somewhere during the 19th, 20th century. And um, yeah, you can really see that the, the cities kind of follow the rural landscape in terms of their shape as well. Which is very different from other countries like, say, the Netherlands, where everything's a lot more planned out. Uh, the, the fields are a lot more, well, larger in general, a bit more square, although that also depends which parts of the Netherlands you are. But um, yeah, in general, it's very interesting to look at. I think it's also very different from Belgium, where everything's a lot more 
just randomly dispersed because there wasn't a lot of planning involved in where the houses would go exactly. And you can definitely tell that in England that's more of the case, uh, definitely throughout the ages as well. And it's, it's interesting in this way, and this is something that I really wanted to tackle with this build. It's interesting that the way that cities grow is very dependent on the networks of farm fields and roads that have grown throughout centuries, at least if you look in European countries, um, and it really kind of dictates that growth. So very typically you'll find that some of the main roads in large cities were once the small roads connecting a very small town or even some farms together, and these patterns uh, end up you know, changing over the centuries, but the, the basic layout is still the same. So ideally, you want a city to kind of grow alongside the shapes of the rural landscape around it, and in city skylines you're often very tempted to just start off with your city as a blank slate and start building wherever and for this build i thought it would be interesting to try and use this video to as much as possible work out all of these farm fields in this area give this city a context in which it's going to grow and um, yeah become a realistic organically grown city um, so i'm actually going to spend most of my time in this video laying out all of these paths and roads and farms and stuff like that and trying to create a realistic-ish English rural landscape. And then at some later stage in time, we're gonna expand the city and see how it's realistically gonna grow into this landscape. And yeah, I think that's uh, something that I'm looking forward to a lot. Now, something that you might notice already is that the trees in this game are tiny. And this has been on one hand, something that I really like, because it's realistic, and especially if you're making a new neighborhood, it's really cool that you can tell that a neighborhood is new because the trees are very young. So that's cool. But I'm trying my best here to create a rural landscape that looks like it's been here for ages and that creates a perfect template for the city to grow into. And instead we have all of these tiny little trees. Now, there's another challenge as well. For this video, I am only allowed to go up to the milestone of Grand Village and for some of the later videos we're gonna go up to the later milestones. Now the idea behind this is that uh, over the next few weeks you'll be able to see the cities that all of your favorite creators are building grow and, and change over time and you'll slowly see uh, all of the different features in the game and the same goes for the creators as well which is a really cool idea um, but the way that you gain milestones is a little bit different from City Skylines 1. Instead of being based just on population, it's based on XP. And you get XP from a bunch of things. You definitely get it from more population, but also expanding other things about your city, expanding services or certain buildings, or your citizen hap uh, happiness. If it increases, you'll also get XP. So I think it's a more, well, holistic system, if you will. It takes many things into account, which is very nice. I think it's uh, it was a little bit too restrictive to just be focused on population. However, this also means that I have a deadline for this video, and not just in terms of when I want to release it, but also in terms of when I have to stop playing. And um, yeah, it's as soon as I um, go beyond the current milestone, which is Ground Village. I'm allowed to still build while I'm in this milestone and use all of the stuff that you uh, get when you when you get this milestone and part of that is of course expanding the map size and part of that is different services now as you might also notice but I'm going through this very quickly but there's a uh, system to the things that you unlock with milestones in city skylines one you would just unlock typical services uh, anytime you get to a given uh, amount of population in this case, you're given points which you can spend on any kind of um, development that you want to. So for instance, once you reach the first milestone, you get a few points and you can spend those points on unlocking roundabouts or you can spend them on unlocking basic road services or maybe on uh, something else. So you can choose what direction you want to uh, develop your, your skill tree in, in a sense. Which is very nice, because it means that you're not just stuck with whichever things the game decides you unlock at a given milestone. Um, so yeah, that's quite nice. But at the same time, I have to be uh, very careful not to uh, reach the next milestone and finish this city as much as possible. 
Now, as you might notice, my little thingy in the bottom left corner, which tells me how my milestone is doing, and I'm currently on level 4, the Grand Village, so I'm no longer allowed to reach any other milestone. You can see the, the bar is kind of filling up a little bit, and the problem was, as I discovered after a little while, that my citizens were very happy and it was uh, going well with my city and I just kept getting XP even though I wasn't really expanding. And this is a bit of an issue because these trees take a pretty long time to grow. I wouldn't say quite a realistic time and I'm very glad it's not a realistic time. In about a year or two they'll typically grow to their full size. Uh, but a year takes long in this game. It'll take hours of playtime for these trees to all be grown. And by that time, I'm definitely going to have reached uh, the next milestone. So if I want to work out this rural landscape and make it look like it's been here for a long time and work it out as much as possible, add all of the foliage and stuff, that stuff is just not going to work out. So I'm going to have to come up with a solution to prevent myself from reaching the next milestone in order to show off as much as possible as I can in this video. Which, it does sound a little bit like cheating, or at least it feels a little bit like it, but um, I'm still abiding by the rules, technically. And yeah, this is just something I really, really wanted to do for this video, so we're gonna have to come up with a solution. But for now, I'm still working on uh, creating this rural urban fabric, which I'm trying to make it look as much as possible like it's, it's a very old patchwork of farm fields. And... As much as I would have loved to use hedges here, we're just sticking with other parts of foliage, some small paths here and there, and also some small roads where we can also uh, place some houses here and there, and just make it, make it look like a, a, a very nice rural area. It's kind of fun to actually place all of these trees down, because it's interesting to see that it doesn't quite look the way that it's going to look eventually while I'm working on this, because these trees get much, much bigger than your, uh, what you're looking at right now. These are basically just saplings, and especially some of the alder trees and the oaks, they're gonna grow so large that you can barely see between them, and definitely some of the forests that I'm gonna be making in this time are also going to be very, very dense, uh, so that's pretty cool. And a lot of this work honestly feels kind of like doodling. I find it very relaxing, in a sense. I think the best way to make these organic looking areas, because I think it's actually one of the hardest things to do. It's quite easy to lay down a grid and make a very straightforward city, but to make something that looks like it didn't have much thought in it, uh, put into it and just kind of grew organically over time is quite difficult. But I think the, the point to it is to try and follow the terrain as much as possible. There's a slightly hilly terrain here and sometimes it helps to come up with a way that a road could have curved around terrain and stuff like that. It also helps to turn off snapping. For many of these roads and paths I turned off snapping which works very well in the game actually and even without snapping on you can connect different roads to each other as long as you put them close enough together and you get some nice <laughs> wobbly kind of roads which is exactly what you're looking for. And also I just had Google Maps next to me the whole time uh, on another screen and just kept moving around the English countryside looking at things and being like, oh yeah, I should just put a random patchwork of trees here and there. Um, maybe we can have a little valley, you know, if there's a valley we can put a bunch of trees in there and kind of make it look like there's a little ditch and stuff like that. Because realistically, uh, these 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 farm fields would have grown organically over time, also kind of based on the local geography. And once you've put in all of the trees, after you've already put in your most basic roads, and whenever you're placing down your first road, you should also make them look as quickly as possible to already kind of shake everything up and make sure you're not gonna be staying too straight. Um, and after that, you can just start adding some houses and stuff like that, and eventually you end up with a, a decently natural looking rural environment I find. And yeah, definitely don't be afraid to put a lot of trees and forests, small forests here and there in it as well. Um, because looking at uh, the English countryside, you know, it. this is gonna, this is gonna sound so weird, but it almost kind of reminds me of a Picasso painting with all of the, the little squares-ish looking shapes that aren't exactly squares, but just everything's a little bit, uh, a little bit like cubism almost just a little bit more organic and full of curves. Uh, also, 
I decided to put some little hamlets here and there. So as you can tell here, I just added some houses there. And then over here we have this kind of foresty area extending from the hamlet, uh, which I think kind of makes sense to break up the monotony of the uh, rural fields otherwise. And stuff like that, I think, um, overall makes it look a bit more natural. Over here we also have the garbage facility, which is quite cool. You can actually extend the, uh, the, the area that you dump the garbage. So it's a single building, and then after that you can make the garbage disposal site as large as you want to. The same also goes for the farms. I put down some farms, like a chicken farm over there in the top left. And it's cool that you can just build the farmhouse and then afterwards you can create the shape of the, the farm field itself. Uh, so that also helps to make realistic looking farm areas because I wouldn't want everything to just be green grass. Realistically, if you look at a rural landscape, there will be all kinds of different crops and there will be some fields that they're not using for a bit so the soil can regain its strength, I guess that's a weird way to say it, but you know what I mean. Um, so you'll often have fields that look all kinds of different colors, so we want to get a bit of that into it realistically as well. And then for some of these roads in the town itself, I'm gonna be honest, I actually worked out a sketch for what I wanted the town to look like, and that's when I came up with the one main road going through it, and another road splitting off at some point going to the other side of the island with the roundabout in it. And then a lot of the streets around this are kind of shaped uh, around that. Uh, around the middle of the roads we have some more straight sections where we'll be able to have lots of row houses. And then toward the edges of the town we'll have some, some bendy roads for the bendy people uh, with lots of houses around them and kind of moving into the fields. And over here we've got a more new-ish area where it's outside of the old town, so we have space to, to build a roundabout. Realistically, that's the kind of things you see as well. And I think a, a good point of this uh, approach to building cities, to try and start off small and see how it would have realistically grown over time, is that you also get touches like this. You know, in the old parts of a city, the traffic situation is op often pretty bad because they just kind of organically grew in times when cars didn't even exist so you don't have a lot of space to, to put roundabouts and stuff like that and the infrastructure for cars that you do have is kind of haphazardly put in place after the fact whereas if you go to newer parts of towns you'll have separated uh, roundabouts and maybe even segregated bike lanes and stuff like that that was a weird way of saying bike lane um, so you can start seeing these differences as well so really you kind of want your city to be bad in some respects especially in, around the city center and uh, to kind of retroactively start changing your city as well because once you start changing and adding new roads into an existing town that's when it starts looking a little bit more realistic and so for a lot of these roads as well i tried to make them look like they're just filling in old farm fields and um, yeah realistically i think this town would have grown just alongside the two main roads you know it would just be some uh, ribbon development alongside the roads which is typically how most towns in most european countries anyway start off with and then somewhere during the late 19th early 20th century it started expanding beyond the ribbons of these roads and started getting some actual neighborhoods and yeah, that's uh, about that. Also, there's a bit of a time skip. You might notice that we're already in December 2023. Uh, and you might also notice that some of the trees that I placed down first are already growing quite a bit. Now, the trees in this game can grow up to 2,000. Uh, that's 2,000 wood. That's their value in terms of a forest industry. And... Yeah, it takes about two years to get up to 2,000, and I think the trees in the middle right here now are somewhere around 1,000, so they're halfway grown. They're already looking pretty nice, but they're still going to get a lot bigger, so that's uh, something good to keep in mind. But once you see these uh, trees growing, you can already see what this area is supposed to kind of look like in the near future. And with a few more farms and some nice looking wheat fields, it's uh, starting to look more and more realistic, I think. Also a good thing is we have a tree brush in the game, so for a lot of these foresty areas I'm going with the tree brush. However the tree brush is not super dense, uh, so personally I'd recommend going for the tree brush and then 
adding some individual trees in the middle of the brushed areas. So that's something that I'm going for for a lot of these spaces, which is also pretty good uh, because it allows you to mix up different types of trees together. Something that I only noticed after this build that I should have paid more attention to is the fact that I placed all of these rows of trees uh, without rotating the trees. And it is something that you're gonna notice in the end, that they do look very similar. And in hindsight, I probably should have rotated the trees, but then again, all of these tree lines are already individually placed trees, and the same goes for a lot of the forests as well. And if I started rotating these things as well, that would have been a lot of work. Um, so yeah, maybe for the tree rows, it's good to rotate them but it's a lot of effort for a small extra benefit. So minor notes for my future self, but it's not the biggest issue. And maybe if I hadn't pointed this out right now, you wouldn't even notice it, but oh well. Anyway, over here we get another little hamlet. Really make this look like we're in a, a giant patchwork of little towns and farms on this island. I'm also considering that for some of the uh, next videos, I might actually make some new towns instead of expanding the town that we have right now. Um, we'll see. Honestly, I'm just gonna end up doing what I feel like doing. I'm not even entirely sure what I'm gonna be able to uh, unlock once I get to some of the newer updates. So a lot of this stuff is still a surprise for me as well. I'm really focusing on these trees and roads for this episode. But it's gonna look good in the end, I, I trust me. Now something that I'm also very happy with is the fact that the weather is very well suited for my supposedly English town. It's constantly raining and you might see in these time-lapse videos that the, the lighting also changes throughout the video due to the cloud coverage and rain and stuff like that, which is really cool. It really adds a sense of realism to the game. Anyway, we now get to the end game of me building this town and you very quickly see me zoning everything because I unzoned everything at some point and turned off my um, power generators, which I guess in this case uh, are my wind turbines and my um, sewage system to make sure everybody left my city. So I wouldn't be gaining any more XP and I could actually work on this town and let the trees grow without having to finish this video. But this had a little bit of a downside. As you can see, I'm very quickly expanding this town and I'm very quickly gaining XP again because it's it's expanding very rapidly. And also my, my demand is kind of out of whack, which is a little bit of a shame because altogether this means that I won't be able to fully grow this town into what it could be before the end of this video because I'm gonna, I'm gonna reach the next milestone before I finish this. So it's a little bit unfortunate, but on the other hand, it means that we have something to wait for the next video for. So, little bit of a cliffhanger, but I think it's fine and it's just gonna make the next videos that much better because I'll finally get the opportunity to really work this island into what I'm thinking of doing with it. But for now, I had to add some extra commercial and industrial zone uh, just to make sure that at least I got some houses built on the main town so that it could look decent for the final video and also so that we can start expanding this town in general. So I added this new industrial area here. Not a, not exactly sure how well it's gonna work out. Um, I do like that it definitely looks like a much newer industrial area compared to what we had. And you can also tell that by the infrastructure. So I think it's gonna work out fine eventually. We could maybe even add a port in here at some point in the future. But yeah, we'll just see what this uh, grows into organically over time. Anyway, that's it for the time-lapse, so let's quickly check out the town and see how it's doing. Alright, I wanted to look at what we have right here, but I just noticed that a cloud is right on top of my town, and now it doesn't look the way I would like it to. But, you know, that's the weather. It's actually kind of cool that this stuff happens, and that it actually affects the lighting in the game as well. So I'm pretty happy with it overall. Also, I just noticed this thing is still turned off. Anyway, let's turn it on then. There's our landfill. And here's everything else. Uh, my little town over here. Not entirely sure what I'm going to call it yet, but it definitely deserves a name at some point. So does this one. And so does the big one. I've opted for calling it St. Luke, but I'm still not entirely sure if I'm going to stick with that. It was kind of a project name, but honestly, all things considered, it's good enough, I think. And as you can see, it still has some filling in to do. There's a lot of 
residential areas that aren't filled in by houses yet. And yeah, it just hasn't reached its final form yet. I think it's going to take the next video to actually get there. But eventually, when all of this is filled in with houses as well, I think we'll have a very nice transition into the rural area here, especially with some houses alongside these bendy roads. So all things considered, I'm very hopeful for the future. And I've had a lot of fun doing this. I honestly can't wait to expand this town. And especially comparing vanilla City Skylines 2 to Skylines 1 is a day and night difference. Uh, this is already a lot more fun, but also it's very doable to make something that looks very realistic. And one thing that also helps with that, for videos at least, is this really cool photo mode slash video mode that we uh, now have, which allows us to do all kinds of crazy things. Uh, one of them is actually change the weather, uh, change what our city looks like. We can add some new clouds and stuff. We can change the time of day and actually create some pretty cool looking uh, sunsets as well. So yeah, I'm very positive <laughs> about my gameplay so far. Honestly, just can't wait to play the game a little bit more and also finish this town because there's still a lot of work to be done but I think it's going to be very doable for the next video to finish this part of the island and maybe this part of the island as well. Because as our city gets bigger, we get more and more uh, map tiles unlocked and we'll be able to really turn this into something. And at some point in the future, we're probably going to cross over into the mainland, start building some highways and stuff like that. But for now, this is going to be it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this look into uh, my first build in the game. And yeah, let me know what you guys think of the game from all of the videos that you've seen so far and from this one as well. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Ciao.